Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Contingency Plan Podcast. My name is Jedi Master David, and with me, as always, is Darth Austin. Hello, everyone. Well, back for another week. Our uh, apparently our plans have been completely scrambled, though. What are you What are you doing, man? You know what I think it is. I think it's that giant salt crystal that's over your 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 left shoulder there that's that's throwing throwing the vibes out of out of check. Like you, you need to smash that thing. I have no idea thing. what you're talking about. My name is covering that on my screen, so mm. it doesn't exist. That giant Himalayan sea salt. <laughs> it's a nice nightlight. Do, do you uh, do you Not shave off little it. pieces of it when you need some extra salt for your food? So much healthier than Morton's, man. <laughs> it's the kosherest of kosher salts. <laughs> uh, we've just lost the healing crystal people. Oh, no. And the Morton salt fans for the five of you that are out there. Yeah, still. for sure. <laughs> uh, I guess really the second follow up here is. Uh, so have you bought any watches yet after our conversation from last no. week? No, no, because I'm not going to just buy a cheap watch after watching all that. I'm going to buy something stupid expensive. All right. And I'm not doing that until after I'm done buying diapers. But so <laughs> how many videos did you watch? I watched two. Okay. I didn't watch a ton. Okay. I won't lie. All right. Okay. <laughs> but I do love the guy. He is awesome. He's funny I couldn't well. find anything but the reaction videos, though. I couldn't, like, There's I didn't sift very far through, but it was so many reactions. Like, maybe I'm on the wrong channel. Maybe he has more than one. But I couldn't find any others. No, he does do a lot of reaction stuff and like travel vlogs and a few other things. I I had also uh, found another channel. He's he looks like uh, he's probably got to be sixteen, but he's actually like forty. You know that those kind of people's like t- was it Teddy Baldassar or about Baldassari or something like that? I can't remember his name exactly. But I started. Uh, he does a lot of recommendations, so he'll do like lists like. Here are five watches under five hundred dollars. Here are the best watch. <laughs> he also does videos with that guy from the uh, from Shark Tank, the Kevin O'Leary. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Really? So he does some videos with him because I guess Kevin O'Leary is like a big watch guy or something. So they they go out and they do little little things. But yeah, it's like Teddy Bal- Baldassar or about Baldassari or something like that. Anyway, he looks like he's sixteen. And he apparently has like a little watch company or whatever. So. Yeah. yeah, I do like the guy though. He kind of reminds me of uh, I don't know. Do you watch late night shows anymore? God no, no. <laughs> I don't watch TV. The the James Corden um, yeah. carpool karaoke guy, okay. yeah, sure. British guy, yeah. kind of reminds me of him. But he was okay. fun. I did the uh, the Dave Ramsey one. That was hilarious. He had a swear. Gordon counter. Ramsey. Or Dave. Did I say Dave Ramsey. I was oh about God. to say, were you getting That's some financial <laughs> advice or something like that? I mean, what are we on doing? Why not to buy gold watches? Yeah, no, no, Gordon Ramsey. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, I've I've watched Gordon. Gordon Ramsey has some nice watches. Like he buys he some. Does. He buys some nice watches. Yeah, yeah. I was kind of expecting a little bit more flashy than that too. He had very, very unique and subtle. Yeah. Watches. Have you? Have I liked. You, he had one that was like a. It was a glow. It had a glow in the dark radioactive material yep. on it. And it but apparently, out, what yeah. makes it really, uh, really rare is you don't change it out. You don't change your face out with new material, yep. and you let it burn out just to show that you actually use it instead of just displaying it. Yep. So that was kind of cool. Yeah, <laughs> it was. Uh, have you gotten into any of the stuff where? And, and by the way, th- this is a uh, Nico Leonard is the is the the the, the first channel we talked about. Uh, if you didn't listen to last week's episode, which obviously you did, <laughs> did have you gotten any of his videos where he complains about uh, people like putting aftermarket diamonds or, or what they call bust out now? Have you heard of? I, I saw about one that? little short on it. I couldn't remember who the guy was. He was he complaining it. about, but well, they the, are funny. He gets super passionate. Well, the thing is, is like a lot of those people that do that, they they, they aren't great diamonds. They're, they're like diamonds that weren't you know, that aren't good enough to be jewelry. You don't have they're any not trail certified. They're, right. they're, they're nothing really. So yeah, he's, he's a funny, he's a funny little, uh, uh, dude from the Netherlands who lives in Belfast, Ireland, who runs a watch, <laughs> uh, boutique out of a really expensive hotel. And his little watch boutique is literally in a safe because the hotel previously was a giant bank. So really? <laughs> he lit his, 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 <laughs> His his little literal show room floor is in the bank vault of this of this place. It's it's pretty That's interesting. Pretty cool. Yeah. So <laughs> automatically you just get to lock it up every night in a giant bank hey, vault. You don't so have to worry about go. security. <laughs> 
And Security it, cameras. What's the point if they can break through that? I'm not worried about cameras. No doubt. No doubt. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, no, that's interesting. That's a, it's, it's interesting stuff. Uh, but aside from all that, and we'll probably yak here a little bit more, but uh, this week we are going to take a look at uh, the Kenobi comic, Obi-Wan comic, uh, issues two and three. Three just dropped last week. And uh, we're also going to talk a little bit about the Andor trailer that dropped, the full official trailer that just dropped. Um, but I guess technically a bit of a correction, we were... I don't know. Maybe we were under the mistaken. I, I I remember reading it that they were talking about dropping the series on April third or April August <laughs> August thirty first, no. and now the actual drop date that we have now is uh, uh, what was it September twenty first September twenty first. So we have a little yeah. bit more time. So we're going to restructure the uh, the schedule and uh, push some things back, add in a few things. So we'll, we'll have to talk a little bit about that. But I know you've wanted to go over the uh, Force Unleashed book, uh, a little bit more New Jedi Order, because we're really in the meat of things. Just got done with Star by Star, which was, uh, which was a good time. And then, uh, yeah, well, I mean, we'll work in a, a couple of other things in there, just not 100% on that. So we'll have to talk a little bit about it. But, um, but I guess just to continue the conversation before that particular disclaimer, how's your week been? Yeah, not too bad. Super slow, relaxed week. Today was a very stressful day, but other than that, pretty, uh, pretty boring. We uh, we went and did our uh, gender reveal ultrasound last Saturday. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're doing the gender reveal this coming Saturday. Obviously, you guys are going for that, mm-hmm. and then be doing some tubing on Sunday over in our old neck of the woods where we grew up. It'll be fun, good time, and a little bit of lazy days. I'll have to get some sunscreen or something. Yeah. Yeah. Farmer's tan is pretty bad right now, so i got to protect myself. (laughs) I might fall asleep, I'm not going to lie. I'll have to tie myself off to everybody. That's probably pretty smart. (laughs) Probably a smart thing to do. Yeah. Well, good. But not a whole lot going on, really, to be honest. Pretty slow week. Yeah, I mean nothing nothing wrong with that. Um yeah, week week has been pretty pretty busy for me so far. I've had a lot uh to do uh work wise. Uh did go down last night to uh Clippers game. They had the Diamond Dog. Um, nice, nice. You know, got in, uh wait waited in a an extremely long line to get our, you know, hot dogs. Uh <laughs> Ate said hot dogs, drank a few uh, adult beverages, and yeah, not not too bad, not too bad. Um, but yeah, really. Aside from that, I think um, I, I, nothing, nothing, nothing else really big. I, I will say this: we we hadn't really talked about this yet, but more than likely going to start looking at selling this house here at some point. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Market is uh, very interesting right now. Fed has been increasing interest rates, so I think I'm going to try and cash out of the place uh, before it is too late. (laughs) There's a lot of industry coming up close to your neck of the woods, not quite near. I'm not trying to triangulate for all you guys trying to kill my brother, but, you know. Mm. But, yeah, yeah, you're probably picking a pretty decent time. A lot of people are going to be moving into that area here soon. Well, I also kind of want to get out sort of before school starts, because there are people out there who, you know, get to looking at school districts and they want to be in a certain place. And, you know, there's a lot of timings for that when you talk about, um, you know, being able to even be in a certain school district and all that stuff. You have to be in at certain times or by certain times, all that sort of bull crap. So, yeah, probably setting that up, going to shop a little bit realtor-wise, try and find one with, you know, the lowest possible fees so I can maximize <laughs> the highest possible profit. Um, it's not like you need a lot of effort involved in selling a house right now, so you certainly shouldn't pick the most expensive one. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I will say this, it, and this is not very interesting, I guess, to probably most of the people who want to listen to Star Wars stuff, but... Uh, we're we're in a bit of a problem here economically where we've printed way too much money. We've allowed inflation to become a real problem. Um, and that is a government problem, um, that they created. We didn't create inflation. 
um, normal people don't create inflation. Usually it is, it's the overprinting of money. Uh, and then with all the distribution problems uh, due to COVID and whatnot, that's been a huge issue driving up prices. The home home market has been squirrely for a number of years now. When I bought this place in 2017, uh, it was a seller's market, but the prices weren't bad, but you had to be quick as a buyer. If you weren't, you were instantaneously either going to be outbid or uh, lose <laughs> because you weren't quick enough. You had to make a decision quickly. Um, so yeah, now there's a little bit more time, like things are on the market a little bit longer, but not terribly, but the prices are way up. And, uh, you know, when you, when you go in there to, uh, get your loan, cause not most people aren't paying in cash anymore, uh, or ever, <laughs> you know, you gotta have a higher <laughs> That's down not what payment. Dave Ramsey says, speaking of him. Well, Dave Ramsey <laughs> has some good advice, but he also he has some out there. He's advice old. Too. He's, he's yeah. a bit old. Um, but, uh, but yeah, no, so you got to have a little bit more in the down payment bucket um, and, you know, very minimal debt uh, in order to make it work. So anyway, there's a lot going on. But uh, yeah, that's something that will be uh, coming up probably here yeah, cool, before cool. too long. So exciting stuff. You, you ever going to you going to paint your kitchen before you do that or yeah no i I just i actually just finished uh well i I have to do some touch-ups here and there but i've got my one bathroom painted that was blue you know so that one's painted uh Uh, yeah so finishing touches on that i've got some trim to do and then uh yeah painting painting over uh the kitchen the cabinets were all i did that uh, last month so the cabinets mm-hmm. are, are painted, so just need the back wall and everything, and then pretty much done. The yeah, sad thing is I haven't even been over since you painted those cabinets. It's, yeah, it's, it's been, been quite it's a while. Been, yeah, it's, it's been a little little bit, a little bit, sure. But uh, Maybe here before uh, Andor we'll have to do a uh, special night, do some food reviews or whatnot. Yeah, and do, that'd be I don't want to say a uh, patron video. It's not like we really do that mm, anymore, but yeah. something of the same type for sure you know for sure for sure well all right folks let's go ahead and roll into a few things i think uh talk and or first yeah hop into that trailer and or so i i the guess one no one expected to be good <laughs> uh, there are a lot of people who weren't necessarily interested in it. i will say though that there are still a lot of people who don't seem to be particularly interested in it which is a little little crazy uh to me but we got a yeah, about two and a half minute uh, official trailer, and uh, so what? What were your first impressions after your your watch through? Beautiful rolling landscapes, vistas. Uh, we had some really cool imperial backdrops. It seemed like we were definitely going to focus on the empire quite a bit on this, and just kind of how corrupt they are, which is always fun to go through. Mm-hmm. Um, Attention to detail in this seems really amazing. It's not even so much that I'm excited about what's going to happen in the story, but just the high-quality visuals and the sound effects for it from what I saw in the trailer were extremely impressive. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I mean, it looks great. Uh, one of the things that did come out after this is that they are not using uh, ILM's, you know, the volume, this... Um, sort of big circle thing <laughs> that, uh, that Might was really a bad thing after Kenobi. <laughs> yeah. But it was popularized in, in the Mandalorian and great, great piece of, of technology when you think about it, mm-hmm. because it does do a lot of heavy lifting. Um, but they're in quotation doing this more old school. And I'll, I'll say that, I mean, I've said it a million times. I think ILM is behind the times. I think the volume is great. It, it's it's a it's a great thing, um, but if we're if we're sitting here acting like ILM is the the bee's knees in in tech, I just don't think that that's the right thing anymore. It just it's that's my opinion. Um, now this isn't to say that this series won't use you know CGI and filling and all. Every movie does that. Even anybody who said oh all practical sets, yeah. But then you touch it, it up. Happen anymore. <laughs> well, it, even if you did, you still 
touch it up later. I mean, that mm-hmm. there, there's, there's always going to be something that you, you kind of do. I mean, this isn't the 1960s for God's sake. Um, so I, I, I do think it looks good. I, I, I think it, I, I personally think it looks interesting. Um, I, I don't, I don't know specifically, you know, obviously what the huge focus will be. Um, but it does, I feel like we're going to get more Mon Mothma perhaps Mm -hmm. maybe showcase her a little bit. We have some new characters, um, that are, that are showing up here in the trailer. Let me just real quick. Uh, let me just go real quick here and quite possibly maybe, uh, if I can, okay. Yeah. Just a second. Just a, okay. Uh, yeah. Get rid of that ad. All right. <laughs> so Genevieve O'Reilly would be playing Mon Mothma. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have obviously we have Forrest Whitaker again with mm-hmm. uh, Saul Guerrero. Uh, Stellan Skarsgård uh, looks to be a pretty focal point in here, possibly like maybe somebody high placed in the Empire who is trying to work into the rebellion. Mm-hmm. Which I pretty think epic name, by the way. Yeah, well, yeah. Uh, well, uh, is this our guy who uh, mispronounces Andor? Uh, uh, Ander. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, he's he's been in a lot. I mean, I think well, most recently, probably the Thor movies. Hmm. Most recently, maybe. But he's 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 been in a ton. If you look at his IMDb, he's he's been in a lot of different things, but fairly well represented in the uh, Marvel cinematic universe mm-hmm. uh let's see here uh, uh fiona shaw wasn't that the lady who played oh yeah she played aunt petunia in the uh, harry potter movies hmm. so she's nice. gonna be in here nice. um oh yeah the the little scene with the woman crying and yeah. then the droid rolls up on her yeah right. yeah okay. um th- there are a few well, that's that's in- interesting. Skarsgård, they they're only saying is in one episode. That probably more of a troll. Mm. I'm just looking at IMDb. Um, yeah, it's funny because they see Diego Luna, Cassian Endor, thirteen episodes. Genevieve O'Reilly, Mon Mothma, twelve episodes. Alex Ferns as Sergeant Koztek, twelve episodes. Uh, Wilf Scolding, no name present here, five episodes. Clem's Schlick. Shick, sh- shick, sh- shick, shick sh- hydro for men. Yeah, who uh, looks? I, I I can't remember from the trailer. Both of those guys kind of look similar, but looked like one of them was going to be, you know, or both of them. Who knows? Uh, going to kind of be uh, in that sort of empire side of the role. What do you think of some of the imp- imperial uniforms here, though? Because they were definitely different. Mm, mm, er, early empire stuff going on. I don't know. They were. Uh... Not as impressive as some of the stuff we've seen. I mean, like some of the Mandalorian stuff and obviously even just old Empire uniforms seemed a little bit more thought out. Um, I don't know. I, I, they were a little... the the Like the red striping mm-hmm. and they almost look more like, you know, almost like leather armor than they do actual suits. <laughs> in some scenes. Right. They're odd. They're yeah, odd. they are a little odd, but I mean, obviously I do say early empire. We did have some of the, um, uh, the clone wars era transport gunships as well. Uh-huh. So while some of the officers are wearing the whites and the grays, uh, it seems like a lot of these people on planet definitely have some stranger, bit stranger apparel. Uh, so I'm, I'm not quite sure what that will look like. Um, but yeah, I mean, overall, I think the series looks great. I think, yeah, uh, I'm very excited for it more than I have been, honestly, after yeah. seeing this trailer. The only thing I'm not super thrilled with, and I kind of want to get your take on this too. It's a recurring theme. We always talk about this, but three episode premiere, we're going to get three episodes dropped at once. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. I wanted to talk about that too. Uh, personally, I think that that's dumb. I mean, why in the hell yeah. two is one thing if you're going to do like shorter opening yeah episodes but three is just why would you do that and then do a weekly make I don't a get that. longer premiere episode yeah hour and a half episode we've seen it before with other things i don't see why we can't see it now yeah 
It did, it didn't make it didn't make any sense. I'm I'm not sure. Almost like they're making up for being late in a way, and I don't feel like you need to do that personally. I am fine with waiting a little bit, you know, taking a week or two to perfect things over getting the episodes right away if they feel like they need to improve. Mm-hmm. I've been the same way with like game delays, movies, anything like that. You don't have to make it up to me. Yeah, I'm not one of those guys who pre-orders and expects to be able to get something on the spot and everything. I just, I don't know. I, I don't like that level of service. I'd rather just watch it week to week. It's one of the only things I really get to enjoy anymore that isn't a huge, you know, season dump like Netflix does. So. Yeah, fair. That's very fair. Um, I don't know. I I, I really. I really don't know. I, I just, it's almost like they're trying to live in both worlds where it's like, well, Hey, look, mm-hmm. you know, we're giving you, we're giving you the, the big dump the and show. then the not so big <laughs> dump. And you know, you guys are supposed to like this. It's like, but like, we don't, <laughs> we don't like that though. Well, it's just kind of weird. Like the people who like the week to week aren't going to like it. And the people who like, the season dump are going to be disappointed after that. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, very, very true. I, I don't know. I don't know exactly what the uh, what the end game is there, but three three episode drop, so that will be a thing, and we will have to see how that works. So, meh. Yeah, is what it is. Yep. All right, what else we got? Anything more on Andor? No, uh, I do believe it is time to hop into everyone's favorite character that we have not beaten to death, and, <laughs> you know, it's not a dead horse yet. We it's have fine. never beaten this this character to death. So <laughs> jumping back into the Obi-Wan comic, uh, I don't remember exactly when the first issue of this. It was before the, the series... Uh, dropped and I did find it kind of interesting that they had such a long pause. I know you don't typically want to drop content before or I mean really excuse me during uh, the run of a show that is fair but taking such a long stretch in between uh, issue one and then um, now issue three seems a little hinky to me, but again, that that's been pretty typical release order for for these any any Star Wars adjoined comics to a uh, any series though, so mm-hmm. probably fairly accurate. No, yeah, yeah. Luckily, we were busy; otherwise, it would have been a little more awkward going <laughs> back into it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So, anyway. Uh, we get issues two and three and uh, two very different, uh, mm-hmm. different stories here. Yep. Different timelines, different, uh, perspectives. We get very young Obi-Wan versus a uh, more seasoned combatant. Mm-hmm. So, uh, we Still have the same kind of, uh, outlook on life though, which is nice to see. No doubt. So we do have sort of a subtitle here, A Shadow Falls on the Padawan. Um, And like our first issue, we do start with old Ben Kenobi on Tatooine, sort of writing in his journal, uh, which is nice. I think it would be kind of cool to uh, maybe, if it were me, I would branch off of this and maybe have... Uh, like an official journals of Kenobi musings or whatever. I think that that would be really cool. Um, Mm -hmm. But we start out with Darth Maul. We get, we get kind of a comic uh, Darth Maul here, sort of Kenobi speaking about, which I thought was interesting. The dread, the dread that was in the eyes of Maul. Something not really mentioned on, uh, TV series Rebels, he kind of focuses more on Luke as he's dying. So yep. it's kind of cool to get that perspective. Yeah, it was. Um, pretty well-designed panel here uh, as yeah. well for, for Maul and Kenobi as they have their 
their final face off in the desert. Yeah, I put a lot of detail into uh, Maul's saber, which I really appreciated, mm-hmm. and his little uh, his little suit kind of <laughs> kind of made it look like uh, Ben was almost sitting during the duel. It's kind right. of funny. <laughs> yeah, it is. So as we move along, we are in the Codia system, the mid rim, and we are on a mission with uh, with Qui Gon and Obi Wan to a mining planet that mines diamonds, I guess. Mm-hmm. But when they get there, it is effectively so dark that you don't necessarily know where your footing is. It has gotten that that dark. Uh, so we come out with our Geordie LaForge uh, uh, eye spe- spectacles, <laughs> visors. So close. We had, we had the visors. We do have laser swords so close to Cyclops, mm. so far away. So oh, sad. Yeah. Kind of odd, though, that that would be a tool of the Jedi, seeing as how they typically train without their vision. You know, having impaired vision to begin with seems like yeah. that would be pretty comfortable for them for the most part, but kind of is a good setup for a learning lesson for, uh, for old Obi-Wan. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, t- to be fair, the, the, the Jedi at this era really are using technology quite a bit in different ways. So yeah, uh, it is a little strange, but they do, they do use it. So there you go. Um, Sets up a good little horror scene. Yeah, it does. Uh, we we also get that they they see their lightsabers even being dimmed, which is mm-hmm. which is very strange here. Um, now, one of the things that I kind of wanted to focus on just a little bit is is really Qui Gon continuing to try and keep Obi Wan in the moment. Uh, we have we have him almost constantly just telling him, you know, like, hey, stay here, stay in the moment, stay on task, and like. Obi-Wan in his little journal uh, bubbles is like, yeah, I mean, that's something I appreciated about him. It was, uh, he was always singularly focused type of deal. He was always in the moment, mm-hmm. which we got in the movies we've had all along. And, um, and I personally, I think that's what made him a better Jedi than most. Totally agree. Well, uh, eventually we run into a werewolf that attacks, uh, attacks Obi-Wan gives him a little slashy slash. Pretty pretty cool, right? Clear, clearly got to uh, hang out mm-hmm. in some Bacta after that because don't remember those scars on you. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. Yeah, you can heal a cut. But, um, you know, we, we do discover that there are some thieves who had broken in, um, set off a, was it, uh, was it a photonic charge in their yeah, core? Yeah, basically destroyed their fuel cell and mm-hmm. uh, would have caused... Uh, severe radiation poisoning for anyone in the area. Well, not only just that, but the the radiation seeped into the planet, which is actually what's Mm -hmm. causing this sort of weird darkness. It's a very strange bit of radiation. Um, And, you know, we eventually meet the sort of the supervisor of, uh, of our, of our group here. And, um, you know, as they're sort of being attacked, Obi-Wan and that supervisor go to, uh, put a new fuel fuel cell in, which I actually felt was this. This was actually really neat. Uh, so we had Obi Wan finding all these shards of a cell, and through the yeah. Force, using the Force, he basically reconnects it and shoves it, you know, uh, Independence Day style, straight up there. I'm not going <laughs> to use that word. That was Independence Day, though. And then uh, gets absolutely wrecked. <laughs> yeah, it, interesting scene. It'd almost be like one of the one of those scenes for any other Jedi where they would have just sacrificed themselves, but not old Obi Wan. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just you know no you're right, but it is kind of kind of a neat neat little couple panels here. He's able to you know again put this fuel cell back together, and then yeah he he kind of gets a little blasted with with just pure light. Uh, and I love the dialogue in this too. It's like then I got to. Witness true darkness, like blindness. Yeah, Couldn't I was see crap. I was totally blind. It sucked, <laughs> sucked, sucked big blinded time. Blinded by the light, <laughs> revved up like a a deuce. Not a not a douche, but a deuce. Another runner in the night. <laughs> Commonly misheard song mm-hmm. lyric. 
One of the most. One of the most. That, well, it's, it's because literally it does right. sound exactly like the same yeah. douche. So, I mean, it is what it that, is. That and bathroom on the right. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> um, so, anyway, uh, you know, Obi-Wan is in the care of a med droid. We, we get to meet our werewolf guy whose name is uh, Rosak. Who's super sad about killing people. Yeah. It's like, uh, sorry, I, I just I feel really bad that I killed all of those people. I killed them I all, the women, I the children. I love how the Jedi are just like, yeah, but they were bad guys. Like, well, I still killed them. It's like, oh, yeah, true, light and darkness. Yeah, good point, good point. <laughs> it's like, yeah, light, darkness. Uh, yeah, it's cool to kill dark, dark. It's fine. Don't worry about it, dude. Will of the Force. What, qui Will, Will of the Force. Will of the Force. Um, all right, so what do we think about this this particular comic? What was your, what was your vibe on it? Were you vibing, dude? How how little, much were you vibing with dude, this comic? Dude, not gonna lie. I mean, it was kind of intense, dude. Like the the werewolf. <laughs> I mean, like he he slashed his face. He almost scarred him for life. It was super intense, bro. Super intense. And yeah, now we've lost all the bros because they're we're, they think we're making <laughs> Just fun. Offending of them. everybody. We're we're offending the Dave Ramsey fans. We're offending <laughs> oh, that's Morton's right. I didn't sea salt people. Yep, I didn't call it out, man. We we all the bros. Them all. Dang bros. Come on, all bros. All the poor Ramsey bros who like Morton sea salt. It's all good, man. Yeah, I mean, I thought it was a good little standalone comic here. I kind of like this almost like we're getting the Monster of the Week just in the Obi-Wan comic. Well, and literally it is Monster of the Week, and it's not tied into your generics like, you know, Clone Wars Mm -hmm. or uh, dealing with the Separatist pre and Phantom Menace, stuff like that. I mean, it's it's completely different standalone. It could have been a cool little, well, it could have been like a Clone Wars show episode, truthfully. Sure. The way they yeah. set it up, like completely set up for one, a few panels for one comic, and don't have to think about it again. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. No, I think it's pretty great. Uh, th- th- this one pr- in particular, I thought was really good. The artwork was nice. The um, the 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 story, although obviously limited, you know, you're in a comic now, so it's it's going to be somewhat limited. I thought was. Uh, I thought it was really nice. I I, I didn't yeah. mind it at all. I'm not going to give nice a rating. to have a story completely centered around just a simple lesson. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. know, of of either not relying so heavily on your senses or being more in the moment, so you can notice dangers around you. Not relying on you know things that you've grown up with your entire life, like mm-hmm. just just the way they mentioned, like oh, even my lightsaber didn't help with the darkness, which is something I'm sure they're used to in yep. these situations. So. It was kind of cool. Yeah, and yeah. it does tie into the whole, you know, the Sith narrative at the beginning of the storyline just a little bit. The yeah. way he mentions how some creatures can't be redeemed, but then obviously we do end up saving our our werewolf buddy and he repents of what he's done. And even what? though the Jedi don't, they think it's pretty what? cool. What have I done? Uh, you did <laughs> something pretty cool, dude. Don't worry about it. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. R- really? You killed all those people that we were supposed to kill. Yeah, I mean, we were going to kill them. So, like, you know, you kind of just helped us out. It was, it was pretty sick. I mean, you were like... You showed uh, you mercy went, you went on full them werewolf not letting mode. us deal with them. It's pretty cool. <laughs> I mean, we were... I, I, my God, I was I was scared. I was awesome, dude. You want some uh, You want some lightsaber claws? I can make that for you. <laughs> you want a lightsaber gauntlet for your hand? Oh, my God. <laughs> Here, just take this lightsaber. It's fine. We get rid of them all the time. Oh, boy. All right. Well, moving right along, issue three now. Yeah, yeah. Then getting into that generic storyline I mentioned earlier, we're getting into some Clone Wars. A little bit. What do you think? Of, uh, I guess I guess I didn't really talk about What do you think of the cover? I uh, Well, uh, I don't know. For two? That was This was my cover. You, yeah, I got the same cover okay. through, through good old comiXology. Stupid comiXology. Yes, I like the cover. Do, it's do very wanna, simple. You, but do you want to rant about comiXology? I mean, is, is it really a rant about Comixology and Amazon, or is it a rant about Google Play Store? I don't know. I don't know, man. You can't but just for all buy you, uh, all y'all fans of uh, Google who don't have Apple products. Uh, it was great. I went to buy these comics this morning, and I was told that I couldn't do it through the uh, Comixology app, so I hopped on the Amazon app and was told that I couldn't do it through that anymore either. Apparently, through the uh, terms of service for Google Play Store. Digital purchases have to be handled through the website, not the mobile app, and not 
the Comixology app anymore. So it is literally just a clone of Kindle now. Because I can look, anything I buy from Comixology is on Kindle as well. So there's not much of a reason to use it anymore. I don't know. Kind of odd. I don't know what's going on there, but uh, not a huge deal, I guess. But yeah, the cover was cool. Um, Pretty simple. Nice little bit of horror aspect on that. Um, kind of like the uh, cover for three more, to be honest. I thought it was a really interesting cover. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Gotta love that Obi Wan armor. <laughs> yeah, no, you for sure. You definitely, definitely can get down with that, uh, no doubt. Um, yeah, it, it, like you kind of mentioned, it did have a little bit of that horror aspect, um, which is good in doses, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, but no, I thought it was a good cover. Well, well illustrated and, um, yeah, set up a nice little adventure. Now it's really Absolutely. time to hit issue three. It's clone wars time, brother. Now let's just talk about the cover now. <laughs> what do you think about <laughs> it? What do you think about that cover? Yeah. It's awesome. You got Cody or, you know, someone else who's just dressed like Cody. I don't know. They're clones. <laughs> It's a good little cover. Um, side story. I had went down last Wednesday to pick up comics that I really hadn't been in there for a while. And uh, I could have sworn I picked it up, but apparently I didn't. I, I don't know what happened. Uh, so I had two and I didn't have three. So I had to like run down real quick before the recording to pick one up. And they had one, which was great. But uh, yeah, very strange. Very, very yeah. strange that they, uh, that I just forgot. I don't know. I must've yeah. just forgot. So and obviously, uh, uh, if, if you ever can't find your comic, you can just let me know. You can hop on my account. It's not the best way to read, but it's an option. Don't tell Amazon that. No, you're not supposed to let them know. We don't share anything ever, ever. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Issue three, darkness before the dawn. Um, we again start with Kenobi here with his fierce eyes. There's a storm coming through. All that fish he had just cut up got all dusty. It was all waste of time. Now he's mad. Do you think he's still about the clone wars? You think he's still cutting up fish at this point? Or do you think he moved on? Maybe got another job. Maybe he's the guy, uh, paying everyone out for cutting up fish. Now (laughs) he took, he took the the ranks a little bit. He's manager. (laughs) I'm the manager now. That would be funny if he if he just was. He it's just like this is my fish business now. Everyone who walks up to get their payment, hello there. Hello there. Just the he just has the same bot, it just says hello there every time it dispenses. He doesn't coins. even say it himself. He just has R2 there. Yeah. He he bought it for a little bit before the sand people got it. Oh just, okay. He's got a recording of him saying hello there. There we go. <laughs> uh we do get a little flash here that uh that we sh- we show Obi Wan still has his old Clone Wars armor, mm-hmm. which is kind of fun. Yeah, um, you can kinda only kind of wonder where he got that from during Operation Nightfall. But uh, <laughs> well, you you can only imagine yeah. kind of what Luke, you know, as he he comes back to his mentor's hut after everything before return 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 of the Jedi, you know, and he's just like. You know, sifting through his stuff, touching everything. Hey, Luke, stop touching my stuff. Well, you're dead. It's my stuff now. Well, okay, I guess that's technically Go true. Go away, Force Ghost. <laughs> you're not my dad. One, one thing I actually did read this week, it was like a like a fan theory, which I suppose could certainly be true, or maybe, is that the kyber crystal of Luke's saber in return was actually Qui-Gon's kyber crystal. Because like mm. Obi Wan saves saved it saves yeah. like uh, Qui Gon's blade, and we know that Luke went and found plans for a saber, which became his Return of the Jedi saber in uh, Obi Wan's uh, hut. Uh, so it's also conceivable that he also found a kyber crystal, and guess what? How so? Happens to be green. So <laughs> not a far stretch, really. Yeah, that wouldn't be something worth making extended edition for to add that scene in that wouldn't be cool at all well there is there is that one little uh little 
Force Ghost conversation with Qui Gon in there. Well, now you're oh. just going crazy now. I, mean, I don't care. I'll go crazy. Okay. Go. How about we just add a few more <laughs> dewbacks and some uh, some other you know creatures and stuff? Hey, how about we just make Jabba the Hutt bigger or something? Or like, uh, oh, do you don't remember Second Jabba? He's been there the entire time. <laughs> Stop meddling. Although I will say the the cut scene that should have never been cut where Luke was literally making the saber in the cave, like the final touches that mm-hmm. should have been in there. But. I always picture it'd be really cool. And maybe someday they'll do it with CGI Luke, but just a nice little meditation scene where he's recreating the saber through the force, just not touching anything, building the saber slowly, not really any big dramatic stuff going on. Just a little build up before, we rescue Han. Mm-hmm. I always thought that'd be really cool. Yeah, I, I can see that. Well, anyway, back into our comic here. Um, we have our remembrance, and then we go into uh, basically an assault that uh, Obi-Wan is leading. Interesting couple of panels here. We have, uh, we have uh, Mace Windu in here. We have Kit Fisto. We have Yoda in, in one or two of these little panels. We have mm-hmm. Anakin and Ahsoka also present in the panels. We have a dead Jedi uh, who is just dead. And Grievous. We show Grievous real quick in the first couple bits of this panel, almost sort of like recapping the war as it is now. <laughs> we even General get one Kenobi. Of those dudes. <laughs> General Kenobi goes out for another mission. Is it bad that I read all the dialogue with that? I love that. Commander on the ship that way. Yeah, that's fun. <laughs> oh, all the, the, yeah, the little commander there. Yeah. They yeah. were using it to build a new mega ion cannon under the direction of General Grievous and Count Dooku. Excuse me. I must brush my mustache. <laughs> okay. Carrying on. <laughs> oh, God. You got to love that narrational voice. That's, um, that's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Okay, so continuing on here, we, we get a couple of uh, other commandos that are joining the, um, was it the... The 212th. Two, two tw- yeah, the 212th. Uh, Commander Megadrix. Yeah, he's mega. And we also have AR9771 or I- Arrow. Is that what we're saying? Arrow, Arrow, yeah. Who has... Um, the flag guy. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the flag guy. Now, look. Why it, do we have a flag guy? This well, isn't. <laughs> well, hold on. So, yes, in this, I don't get it. But historically, in, in battles, yes, you did have a flag bearer. I mean, a flag bearer bearer is an important uh, uh, an important position to right. have. Um, it's very old, and, like, they don't. Like, for the boys who are off fighting now, they're not doing it. <laughs> I mean, I don't think you have just some guy, hey, I've got the flag. But, the, I mean, the flag bearer is still a thing. Um, so that is something that made zero sense to me here. In in this sort of war, uh, yeah, he doesn't have a weapon. He has a flag. Yeah. Seems like, it, one, it'd be a waste of uh, infantry. Two, you're fighting droids. Yeah. How, uh, at what point do you just kind of throw out old traditions to just deal with something terrible going on in front of you? Like, mm-hmm. you're not going to get any morale boost against a bunch of droids with a flag. I'm sorry. That's just not happening. You're, especially with where they're at. Apparently, this is, like, just uh, essentially Normandy in a way. Like, kind they've of. been really, really just getting tore up here. Even Kenobi mentions to uh, our general who shows up, it's like, oh, yeah, this this is the slaughtering ground. Good luck. <laughs> oh, yeah. So what happens to Flag Guy, by the way? Well, he, he goes home, and he has a bunch of flag babies, and mm. everything, everything's happy. He he deserts, and he becomes a farmer. He's that dude from, uh, from Rebels. Sounds like you're lying. No, I'm pretty sure it's him. It's I, that dude from I, Rebels. You know, I hate to say it, but I don't believe you. With his Twilight you. kids. He's got Twilight kids. Yeah. I promise. I mean, look, there's there's not a Twilight for everybody. Like, eventually people do have there to marry isn't. Logistically, that would be impossible. They would Twilight. have to have so many children. 
not everybody finds their Twi'lek soulmate, you know. <laughs> it's it's not like there's an unlimited supply of Twi'leks who are just, you know, just going to go for you. So it's probably something you need to consider, like the realism of having your Twi'lek soulmate out there. Maybe not very practical. Especially when you're a clone. And, I mean, you know, probably not very practical to believe that the flag guy with no weapon who's running out on this bridge of slaughter and uh, you know, probably didn't make it home. You know, you, I mean, he did legitimately <laughs> have a Jedi protecting him. Uh-huh, yeah. Uh, but then the Jedi forgot that he was protecting him. <laughs> there are a couple <laughs> things in here, but anyway, as, as we move <laughs> along, um, you know, even as we're trying to touch down, like ships are being destroyed and... Our like addition, uh, our additional commandos with their weird helmets. Um, they're they're like they're like way too amped, dude. They are almost yeah, cartoony. Like Personally, I didn't like it. No, I, I didn't really either. Um, one thing I will say, I actually did kind of like the animation in here, or the illustration. I mean. It's yeah. it, it's definitely a little bit more lo-fi, but it's got like a very kind of distinctive style to it that I like. Um, not hyper realistic. There's even one panel where we have one of our green shirt soldier guys who uh, gets he just has a head and abdomen of fire. Did you see that one? Yeah, that yeah. was um, it was not funny at all, but it was hilarious. Uh, it's 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 a, literally a comic of side panels that aren't the main focal panel. Yeah, like there is no high quality panel in this. Yeah, but I but do it's li- okay. I do like the illustration. I think it's kind of nice. But um, what you were alluding to is we do get to a point where they kind of get over this sort of ridge, and Obi Wan sees the sun, and the sun rises. It was. It has this weird moment. It's like I realized I really don't want to be here. It's like, really, Obi-Wan? You don't want to be in the middle of this war? Yeah. Interesting. Interesting. I don't want to be here. Get out, General Jesus. What are you doing? <laughs> oh, okay. I get let's to save murder. one more person. Leave me. Uh, blah, blah, blah. May the force be with you. Bye. Yep. See you. See you. Bye. <laughs> um, Just bugged out on that guy. That sucked. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get back to that particular thing here in a second. Let's continue to move on. Uh, we lose. Most, if not all, of our kind of additional commandos, aside from the uh, commander who shows up like shirtless, because why not? Uh, several of the clone troopers are obviously uh, killed. Uh, they keep getting pushed back. Obi Wan keeps sort of pushing them forward. And uh, I wouldn't necessarily say the day is won, uh, but we do have one point here where we've got an IG unit. Yeah. Which I think yeah, is interesting. And uh, Obi Wan totally just, uh, I don't know if he cuts it, its head off at the midpoint or like it's just blaster bolt reflected on it, but we get a pretty cool little scene with that. See, the way I took it is that the the uh, the commander oh, was the one who saved Obi Wan. That's, okay. that's how I took the panel, but I kind of get it because like. Sort of had Obi Wan dead to rights, but it, it does get a little tiny bit confusing. I just took it as that that other commander and took him okay. out. Well, that's cool. Yeah, I can dig that. Yet we live to fight again. I suppose. <laughs> what kind of dialogue? Some man. of us, not flag guy. No, and Obi Wan has his little flag as he's looking out. General, the evacuation ships are here. I need to know. That light could still prevail. Light can still prevail. We do have a narrative we didn't kind of mention at the beginning of the comic where he's just talking about, you know, what what is the place of a Jedi? Anymore. Yeah, that's what I wanted to get back to here because I think it's a bigger discussion and even his realization in here that he doesn't want to be here. He doesn't want to be in war. And he, he even was, like, questioning if that makes him a coward. But the thing is, is, like, it's the same problem that we have with the Jedi. They're not listening to the Force. They're not listening to their own instincts. They are being manipulated, and they're falling right into the trap over and over and over again, and all they have to do is just refuse, refuse to fight yeah, and get to the real crux of the matter, which happened to be Sidious, but they're so blind that they can't, uh, they can't see through the haze. So Obi-Wan's instinct, instinct is correct. The war is wrong. It's a it's a it's a facade. It's a charade. It doesn't have to be there, but they're in it, 
and they don't have to be. But it's don't. interesting that obviously Clone Wars is one of the biggest focal points in all of Star Wars at this point. I think almost to the point of obsession and burnout. But there's a lot. Obviously, obviously, Clone Wars is a really cool era. Uh, there's a lot of amazing stuff that happens during it. We have some really cool Jedi. A lot of potential for side stories that you wouldn't get from any other era. But the more I watch Clone Wars era stuff, the more I think of Qui-Gon personally. Obviously, we're both yeah, big fans of that, so it's going to happen. Yeah. But it, it just makes you think. Obviously, Qui-Gon couldn't have lived through Clone Wars era. It, it couldn't happen. It would be too much conflict of interest. He'd either leave the Jedi or he would just fight with them so much that it would it'd be insane. But just uh, to get his perspective on the Clone Wars, to interact with other Jedi Masters and really call them out on how ignorant they're all being, mm-hmm. it, it would just be a really interesting thing to have happen. E- even Obi-Wan, I mean, he... Yeah, he's like the only guy who wears armor. He's one of the best generals there were in the Clone Wars. He is an ideal general. He cares for his men. He protects them in every way possible. He's amazing with tactics. He's smart. But even at the end of the day, he's not built for this level of war. And it shows in this comic. It mm-hmm. shows in a lot of little you know, snippets of Clone Wars and Attack of the Clones and everything and Revenge of a Sith. But I did like the perspective we got on that. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Hmm. There is a point where where we probably could get out of Clone Wars era. But the problem is, is that there are so many compelling characters, like you just said. And, you know, I mean, hell, look look at High Republic. When we started High Republic, we were pretty amped for it. We were like, this is is the new thing. This is what's going to go down. We're going to get it. And... mm, not so hot on it anymore because we don't really have characters that really... St- I mean, there are a few. Uh, Keev from the comics was pretty cool, but it's a comic. Um, mm-hmm. Avar Chris, you know, kind of was a, a favorite in the beginning. Elzar at first. At first, <laughs> Even yep. Stellan. Even Stellan. Stellan yep. had the most potential at we, first. We were pretty hyped about Stellan. Didn't really get anything out of him. Well, now he's dead. Spoilers. But... Uh, yeah, we have we have a problem with some of the establishing stories, but like it's so easy to go back to the well. And I and I'll mm-hmm. I'll be honest with you, man. So we got the Kenobi series. Up to this point, these comics really haven't told us anything new. They they're just reestablishing what we already knew, what we've already mm-hmm. seen. And not to not to be hypercritical or anything like that, but like is that what we need? Do we need that? I don't know. I was thinking about that too. I mean, uh, I saw for the cover preview for the next one that we have an Anakin Obi Wan late Clone Wars era adventure. Mm-hmm. Have we not gotten enough of that? Not that I don't love their dynamic. I mean, they are the best dynamic in Star Wars. Truthfully, mm-hmm. there's nothing more fun than seeing them just tear things up yeah but haven't we seen that a million times already i mean yeah we just had kenobi come out and we have a lot going on but is that what should be focused on when high republic is floundering we don't have any clear trajectory for a new trilogy and nobody seemingly cares about the sequels anymore do we just go back to clone wars to get some more money well okay maybe i'm being too critical too i probably am that's cool <laughs> we, we we haven't even talked for an hour yet which is which is crazy we've pretty much gotten through our content 
<laughs> so I think I can camp here for a little bit. Um, the, the, the fact is, is that the sequels are particularly tough to draw off of because they were jumbled. They didn't have a clear and succinct story, and there's so many questions. But if you're to clarify those questions, it's very possible that people won't like your, your answers. So why pay? Why pay to do it? Because you have to pay somebody to do it. If you're doing books, you have to pay these writers, which, um, yeah, I, I don't Twitter really, but I, I mean, I, I usually post that we have an episode up there, but I did catch some snippets of um, E.K. Johnson talking about like how writers are paid and they're not necessarily always paid well. It all depends on your contract and your standing and so forth, which is why you see so many people writing multiple books and so forth, because, you know, you only get so much for one, Mm -hmm. but it's still going to cost money and it's still going to affect whoever's bottom line. You know, in this case, you know, like Lucas publishing. And if they're seeing stuff that damages the brand, well, it all depends. Cause I think, I think we are in a little bit of damage control. And that was something that we talked about with the Kathleen Kennedy interview. You know, the reason why they're not doing certain things that we would like is because of effectively backlash that they faced with like solo solo didn't do well. So we're not taking chances. It's like, well, eh, okay. Um, and I think that they, I mean, they definitely face significant backlash for the last Jedi and and even for rise of Skywalker. Mm -hmm. It's easier to go to the well and get the tried and true than it is to create something new because here's the thing you could go to something new and it could be good and people could still complain because it's new. Uh, we've said it a million times that the prequels were heavily panned. People are very critical of the prequels at the time. Now it's different, but then it was very critical. People didn't like Mm -hmm. them. I mean, look at, uh, look at the guy who played, uh, Jar Jar Binks. You you remember his Mm -hmm. name? No, I don't. I can look that up, but go ahead. Keep going with your thought. Okay. So, but look at him. I mean, he was, he was pushed nine ways from Sunday, just blasted over and over again. And even, uh, even the kid who played Anakin, which I can't remember names at all today. At one point, I'm pretty sure that he was in like a mental institution. If he's not now, or he was, and you know, he's just got cracked. I mean, that child actors and so forth, that's a rough road to be in anyway, but they, they eviscerated people. Um, but now it's okay because there, enough time has passed and maybe once enough time has passed and who knows what enough time is, the sequels will be more readily accessible. But I'll even say this. I think High Republic was a failed experiment. I don't think High Republic is a, as successful as they wanted it to be um, with all things considered. You know what I mean? Are we as hyped for High Republic as we were? Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I hate to be negative, but I really couldn't care less at this current moment in my life whether or not we continue into it. I mean, we will, obviously. It's part of our channel, we but might. I don't find a lot of joy in High Republic right now. And to answer our questions, uh, Ahmad, Ahmad Best. Ah, thank you. For Jar Jar and uh, Jake Lloyd. Jake Lloyd, thank you. For Anakin. Thank you. Yeah, good, good, to, good to give people the names out there, even though they yeah. probably know when I forget. Um, <laughs> they know who they are. But yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. Jake Lloyd was uh, heavily criticized. Just as Hayden Christensen was, honestly. I mean, yep. it was very sad in a way because it kind of ruined their careers a little bit. And I don't feel like either of them really deserved it. Mm-hmm. For sure. Same with uh, Ahmad. I mean, God, you're playing a, a character to entertain children and you're being hated for essentially being the Barney of a generation. Well, being what you were told to be. Exactly. You're paid to be that. And well, I mean, it goes back to, um, oh, our character from Kenobi. What's her name? <laughs> Drawing a blank now. Our, our Sith, our, uh, oh, um, Padawan turned Sith character. <laughs> Your turn to Google. <laughs> oh, God. 
Yes, I can't think of the actress's name. Was it Reva? Reva, right? Reva. Yeah, uh, yes. Moses I, Ingram. I'm sorry, I forget the actress's name. Yeah, but Moses Ingram. Yes. Ingram. Yes, I mean, she was paid to do that. She didn't just get to do whatever she wanted. Yeah, she it, did. It was portray, her role, right? It was mm-hmm. her contract. And you can't hate someone for doing their job. Yeah. That much when they don't have any creative rights or decisions to be made yeah. in that situation. Let me tell you, though, let me tell you what, what the fans want, at least what I think the fans want. What the fans want is Luke Skywalker supporting books that actually showcase him as being B.A., like Legends mm-hmm. did. Mm-hmm. What they want is to not be preached at about stuff and just make a damn good script and follow through on it. And look, I get the climate. It's fine. Sure. But at the same token, I think people are really tired of constantly having to see a message where it's just like, can I just be entertained? Well, let you me know, ask you, you this. You put this stuff in subtly, like it's always been. And that's the thing. It's like, it's not like a lot of this stuff has not been in movies and, and television and all this stuff. And it's cool to advance it, but like sometimes you just feel beat over. Okay, so I saw a preview for a second season, never heard of it, of this show about Jesus. It's I think it's called The Chosen or something like that. I was like, mm-hmm. what the hell is this? But it like all the speech was so modern. It was like... Uh, not old King James stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, and again, I'm only going by a preview, but it, it was it was strange. Like it was strangely way too modern. It's like you do realize that whether you believe it or not, and it's cool if you don't, but whether you believe it or not, you have to put it in the scope of the time. You can't you can't just necessarily steamroll modern modern uh, day on these things and make it something. Well, that was uh, there was a show on uh, I think it was a History Channel on uh, the American Revolution that was highly dramatized where they, they followed uh, one of the Adamses and they made him out to be like this almost like superhero guy. It's like, first of all, none of that crap happened. Like none of it. It, it is like terribly inaccurate. Like it's almost criminally inaccurate because people believe right. a lot of dumb stuff that they shouldn't. Um, well, I remember uh, the Hatfield and McCoy show kind of yeah, did that too. That. They made some of the family members out to be super amazing people, like mm-hmm. clearly defined good and bad. It's like, no, they were just a couple of families that killed each other for no good reason. Yeah. There was a lot of collateral damage <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. because of it. Well, a- anyway, I-, I think that right now what people would probably like to see is Luke Skywalker books, like actually showing him out on missions and doing cool stuff. Um, I, I'm not going to give any credence to the whole scrap the sequels and do new sequels and all that. I, you I, can't. I don't it's think. It's not an option. No. They happen. They're canon. Yeah, you they, can't they happen. take away a trilogy of canon. You can't take yeah. away a third of the movies. <laughs> right. That is asinine. It is, it is <laughs> what it is. Um I think that the Ahsoka series, depending on how good that is, I think that, that could be pretty pivotal. Mm-hmm. Um, because if we can tie back into Rebels and finish off that storyline, I think that that'll be huge. Yeah, yeah I mean, uh, <coughs> excuse me. Rebels, Thrawn, everything going on there, Ahsoka. Those are some of the huge focal points in Star Wars right now. I mean, yes, this was all done in a cartoon but it was some of the best done storytelling in all of star Wars. And you can't discredit that. And there are, there is a huge fan base for that. And there's a huge fan base for legends as well. You know, obviously that's why we still do the Jedi order books, not just because we like them. It's because they're popular. It's something that's a fond memory for a lot of people. And it's nice to invoke those thoughts for a lot of people. No doubt. Uh, How many people, I mean, I don't know how much you were a fan of, the books for it, but I mean, how many people would like to see Abeloth return and have a huge <laughs> crusading trilogy of fighting her with uh, with Palpatine back instead yeah. of what we got? I mean, it would be an amazing. And and how are you going to focus on the message of the day 
when you're fighting a literal god. <laughs> Se- seems like it would be kind of a waste of breath when you're trying to save the galaxy. Well, I mean, <laughs> people will find something to complain about with anything. Sure. There, there, sure. Are, there are extremes on either side. Either it's not enough or it's too much or even a little bit's too much or a little bit's not enough. It's, there's always, there's so many extremes nowadays, but, um, but yeah, I, anyway, I don't know. I think we've camped out there for, for long yeah. enough, but to go back to the point, yeah, keep dipping in the clone wars bucket. It's kind of dry at this point. I think. I don't think you can make anything new. Honestly, with the current mm. characters. I mean, maybe you could introduce some crazy character that was in the background that would be really interesting. I mean, there's always potential for storytelling, no matter what era you're in. Yeah, but maybe. Maybe. Maybe we should put some of our creative juices into something else, is all I'm saying. But yes, obviously, mm. you got to have that center point, something to go back to that, you know, is always going to be. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, guaranteed money. Everyone likes Clone Wars. No one's going to complain. So, well, but the, it I is mean, what it is. Okay, so let's get back into it then. Um, you could do, <laughs> you know, like a Poe Dameron series, kind of like make him out to be a little bit like Wedge Antilles was in, in yeah. some of the old books where he's running a squadron <laughs> against something. I mean, you could have the whole sort of galactic reconstruction, you know, at that point. Yeah. You could have um, the remnant dealing with the remnant more than what we saw in Mandalorian. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, well, y- yeah, yeah. Sure, 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 sure. But just the mop up of the the true mop up of the first order. Mm-hmm. You know, you you could do a lot of that sort of stuff with with just with Poe, just kind of like piloting around. Mm-hmm. You could. Uh, you could actually still. Tell a story about Finn <laughs> for those who still care. Well, you know, the funny thing about Finn is, is that you could, you could potentially make him into the sort of reluctant galactic president type of thing, like the Mon Mothma, because he, yeah. he's, he's a character that, you know, we, we even saw how like starstruck Rose was, but in actuality, he's not some giant hero guy. I mean, even though well, he's almost he like the solo of the crew, even though he wasn't portrayed to be at first. True. He's kind of pushed into the role unwillingly. But that's the thing. He's not I mean, as smooth you, as Solo, but he still has the same background. You could make yeah. it work. But you, you, you could potentially make something into that where he, he becomes sort of the, the president during this sort of reconstruction yeah. of, well, of God, the galaxy, even, uh, bringing it all together I again. Mean, something that maybe hasn't been touched on, Maybe someone who like takes the stormtroopers are left that are left. It's like, hey, I can actually acknowledge that you're still a person, and I want to find a place for you and deal yeah. with all the terrible baggage you have and what you were forced to do. Because let's be honest, a lot of those people feared for their lives and their families, and they were forced to commit terrible acts. And Finn would be the person who could relate and actually mm-hmm. try and help them. There could be a really interesting story that is an action packed because of that. Yeah. Very true. It doesn't always have to be Galactic Jedi, you know. Sure. Yeah. So. I mean, you can only do that so much at this point. It's getting kind of, uh, without a complete reformation and a change in the Jedi order, that it's getting kind of sad to watch mm-hmm. the remnant of them, to be honest, after 30 years. Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll see. Yeah. Anyway, have we talked it all to death? I do believe Okay. Talk more about that than the comics. That's true. Yeah. But hey, that comic spurred a discussion. Yeah. So it no did doubt. its job, I suppose. Did its job. Well, folks, if you want to spark a dis- uh, discussion, <laughs> you know, that word, uh, make sure to follow us on the social media Twitter, Facebook, all that good stuff at TC Plan Podcast. Or just send us a good old fashioned email to TC Plan Podcast at gmail.com. Let us know what your thoughts are. About anything Star Wars, and we might just talk about it on a, you know, another episode. But that's all we got. So you guys have a great rest of your week. And as always, may the Force be with you. <laughs>